All right, welcome back, my dear students. So we're, we're going to be learning another JavaScript function here in this video. It's called the uh, set interval timer, and we can actually use that in a bunch number of things like uh, creating a stopwatch, uh, a timer, your own timer, your own clock, uh, even creating a loading page or uh, a, a slideshow, all right, and a lot of uh, other things, uh, creating a delay. Uh, let me show you what I mean in the code. So let's go ahead and click file here, create a project open folder. In our desktop, let's go to project, uh, if you, uh, and then let's uh, put here uh, uh, timer, okay, folder, and let's select that folder and create our index.html file and our app.js, right, app.js. Uh, we're not going to be creating um, CSS, okay. You, you can you, you already know how to use it but we're gonna be focusing on the functionality so say here timer uh, uh, title here h4 maybe hold on so h4 creating a timer uh, using hold on timer here and I'll just create a, a paragraph here at the bottom says creating a timer using uh, set interval set interval function okay in JavaScript all right you save that and let's create a an h1 here let's set the value to zero because this is going to be our uh, timer let's set the ID to let's say timer display okay let's do that and make sure let's uh, connect our javascript file source app dot js okay now it's connected uh let's uh okay let's uh, close this right click uh index dot html and open with live server so we have this preview i'll just put an hr here doesn't really matter it's just a line so all right, so let's go ahead and uh, let me let me show you this. The set interval function looks like this. Okay, set interval, and then of course it's a function. That's why we we do this. When we call a function, a, a very simple function, we do this, right? But and we know already that uh, you know if we have created our function, this is this our function. We already know how to create our function. When we call it, we do this our function, and then that. But if our function has a parameter, for example, a and b, all right, just like what we did before, uh, you have to specify the parameter here, one or two, or whatever it is. We can even capture an input element, right, and put that data here in our parameters. That's what we did in our mini calculator app. So this is a function. This is a, a two parameters, a and b. But the set interval is also has a parameter, just like this one right here. So, uh, the functionality of our function is right here. The functionality of set interval, all the codes that are associated to it are inside our JavaScript. If you press control on your keyboard and click this, this is what it's doing, all right? <laughs> this is what it's doing by this uh, set interval. If uh, we have a function, we, uh, we have here a is equals to uh two let b is equals to one then let the c is equals to a plus b all right this is our code that uh codes that are responsible for our function right here to work so for the set interval there's a lot of great things that's happening in there look at that so control and then click this is it set interval this is what is happening Okay, and each of this you can uh, you can control click that, and there's still a lot, bunch of things that's happening inside of it. So this is already a built-in function that we can use. We don't have to write it. If we, if we have to write it, we have to go through all this. All right. So uh, that's a good thing. So there are available functions in JavaScript that we can that, that are ready for use for us developers. So anyway, the first parameter. Let me just close this. Those are the things under the hood, right? So set under set interval. The first parameter is a function, okay? 
Alright, just like so. Alright, and the second, do, I, I'm not going to enter it so you can see it better. And the second parameter is the time, the interval. 1000 here means one second. Let me compare it to you with our add event listener function. Uh, hold on. Assuming that we have a BTN variable, okay, and we have this add event listener, and then the first parameter was click. And the second parameter was a function. Okay. I'm not going to enter so you can see. Or I'm not going to enter it. Later I'll show you. So right now, if you compare, uh, it's another function. This one has a first parameter of click. The second parameter is this. A, gene a very generic function. Okay. It's actually a function. We're using a lot of the word function right now. Please don't be confused. And don't worry, it will make sense later. So here, our own function here, we're calling it a very simple function with two parameters, one and two. First parameter, second parameter, okay? And this is the under the hood of our function. Right here, you know already that there are crazy things happening inside of it. This one as well, add event listener. If we click it, you know, if we investigate what are inside of the, what are the insides of the add event listener function, there's a lot of things going on there. But basically, all we need to know that we need the first parameter click, get used to this syntax and the second parameter is a function where we can put oh uh, I just press enter okay here I click this and press enter and all the codes in here will be executed uh, by clicking this button all right here in our set interval let me delete this now let me delete this we will now we will now focus on this the first parameter is a function here all right this and we can now go ahead and click this and enter. So whatever code in here will be executed in one second. For example, in one second, I'm going to display the, the hello world text. Okay, there's going to be a delay of one second. I mean, that's the interval. Okay, so you can see it's right here. So let me just put it in maybe five seconds. We're going to wait. Let's save that. Hold on. Hold on, let me just let me just clear this first because it's being executed automatically upon the page uh, loads. Okay, let's do that. Let's save this. Hold on. Okay, let's save that. Let's wait. In five seconds, it will pop up. There you have it. Okay. So hello world. So this is like a delay right now because hello world. You know, uh, uh, we it doesn't keep on executing but as you can see it's there when, when, when we click it after a uh, few seconds it pops up okay let, so let me show you more so we can to make these things clear so all right so we can actually store this in a variable uh, just like other things in JavaScript we can store this in a variable we can say we can say that this is a my timer all right, hold on. Timer display. I, I thought I used my timer here. Okay, we can store it in a variable just like that. Okay. And we can execute whatever uh, code we have in here. So what we're going to do, we will create a mini timer. Okay, we have here a, a value zero. So let's capture this timer display. And let's create a variable here. We already know this. Don't have to explain a lot, right? in this er, in this uh, topic okay so we have a timer uh, a variable timer display here okay and we we need a variable called uh, let's say the timer equal to zero and we are going to increment that here in this code and we need an, another variable called uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, that's what we need uh, let's just declare uh, all right let's let's do this for now so we have that uh, the timer is equals to zero and then we have a timer timer here that is uh, holding the set interval function what we're going to do is uh, we will keep on incrementing the value of this variable okay 
So remember, it's just the same with uh, uh, doing this, the timer, the timer plus one. Okay, it can be anything, it can be a variable x if you want. I'm just naming it the timer right now. So this one is the same as this. I'll just comment this out. And then, so right now we are, every five seconds, we are incrementing, we are incrementing the uh, timer uh, with the value of one every five seconds. But I'll just uh, make it every one second, okay? And whatever the value of the timer, we are going to set it as inner HTML of our timer display, all right? So timer display that inner HTML is equals to the value of the timer. We save this, and there you have it. Every one second, we keep implementing, incrementing the value of the timer, and after incrementing, we are displaying its value inside inner HTML. All right? Now, how do we stop it? So right now, we can stop it uh, in here, but of course, we can just go ahead and... Uh, uh, I'll just leave it. Uh, we can uh, comment this out, all right, and save it. Now it will not work. So what we need is let's create a button for our users so they can stop it, okay, because they are not programmers, all right? We're going to abstract all these complexities from our users, and that is our job as a developer. So let's create a button that says Start Timer. And of course, we need an ID so we can manipulate and target this in JavaScript. ID, let's say start btn. Okay, maybe let's just say start here. Copy this. We need another button to stop it. And I'll name this stop btn. Okay, save that. All right, save that. And now we can go ahead in our JavaScript and create a, a variable for those elements, right? Okay, we have start btn, paste here, paste it here. And then we have stop btn, uh, paste it here. Oh, hold on. All right. Yeah, I'm right here. We have start and we have stop. Okay, so now we can use the add event listener, right? So start btn, that add event listener, and then click, and then function here. Okay. All right, so save that. Uh, now, if we click this button, we need to execute this code right here. Be before it just automatically loads in our, you know, in our, in our browser, right? So, but uh, this variable can only be access accessible inside this button. So we are going to declare it here. Let my timer. Okay, we don't we don't have to put a value for now, but we are declaring a variable. So now. We can just get rid of this let. We are declaring this variable outside this function so we can use it in other functions. All right, this, that's the reason. If, because if we are going to put it here, if we are, if we are going to declare this right here, uh, we, will, uh, we will not be able to access this in other functions. All right, let, let, let's continue. All right, so this one would um, uh, make sense more. So right now, uh, we are executing this upon clicking this button. And uh, we have our my timer, okay, a variable. And we are, that is the variable right over here. And we are uh, putting the, the, the value of this, the timer that we keep on incrementing by one, okay. This one gets updated every one second. So let's see if it works in the browser. So we now have start. Let's click that. And now... Uh, we have a control, okay, that we can use to trigger our uh, code right here. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, create the stop, okay? Right now, this one doesn't work, right? So let, let, let's refresh the page to stop this. So the, the function that is related to set interval is called clear interval. What is it that we need to clear? We are going to clear the timer right over here okay we are going to clear it if we clear that it, it will clear the uh the timer and it will stop okay so right now uh we need to trigger this clear interval using our stop button okay so we say stop btn 
that add event listener when we the user clicks it uh, we are going to use this clear interval function okay let's save that check our browser let's start it okay now let's see if the stop button works let's click stop and it stop all right so there you have it guys so uh, uh right now uh again just a quick recap what we what we have learned here is the function called set interval and i show you that we can use it as a timer okay if you will if you will uh, try to think right now uh, any any idea you will be able to uh, recognize that we can use this in other things like a loading page or a slideshow setting the timer for each picture to show up okay and uh, a lot of a bunch of things so right now i just wanted uh, you to take note all right the the use of set interval we're actually we're, we are actually going to be creating a uh, a uh, timer later in this course all right so just know that uh, set interval accepts two parameters the first one is a function everything that is what's was happening all right and the second parameter is the seconds in fact if we are going to so right now it's one second if we're going to reduce this to 500 that means that is a half of a second if we start it okay it will count faster okay if we are going to set it to 10 all right that is if we will click start as you can see it's so fast now we click stop it will clear the interval in fact you can set the timer display here if you want to uh, let's say you, you want to set it to blank okay timer display and for the for the my timer okay you can set the value again to back to zero all right in the stop button so when we you click start then you stop now it's uh, blank but you can type here zero if you want click start and stop and you have zero here okay start stop all right so i hope that this has been informative for you and uh, see you in the next one all right bye now